Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. So in this video, we will discuss tutorial for Chemistry SK015 Chapter 7 Ionic Equilibria presented by me, Sir Zulahairi bin Ahmad. So let's check it out. So for question number 9, uh, the question asks you to calculate the mass of ammonium chloride needed to dissolve in 30 ml of uh, 0.15 molar ammonia solution to form a buffer solution with a pH of 8.3. Jadi kalau kita tengok dekat sini, uh, maksudnya di sini uh, dia dah ada term uh, yang diberi iaitu dia adalah buffer solution. Jadi kalau buffer solution dengan nilai pH yang diberi iaitu pH 8.3, so kita akan gunakan weak acid, kita pakai PKA. Jadi kalau untuk weak base, kita gunakan PK. PKB okay. so this is PKB and then this one is weak base so uh, nilai yang diberi adalah nilai pH jadi apa relation pH dengan POH okay. pH plus POH is equal to 14 so POH is equal to 14 minus POH sorry 14 minus pH so 14 minus 8.3 we got 14 minus 8.3 Jadi kita akan dapat 6 uh, 5.7 Okay, so uh, by using uh, Henderson Sebag equation POH is equal to PKB plus log concentration salt over weak base So our POH is 5.7 Kita substitute saja ni dari sini 5.7 is equal to PKB is negative log KB 1.8 exponent negative 5 plus log okay, concentration salt okay, concentration salt kita di sini tidak diberi okay, jadi kita akan letak concentration NH4 Cl over okay, concentration of ammonia weak base ialah 0.15 So, soft untuk yang ni tinggalkan concentration NH4Cl saja. Di concentration NH4Cl okay, is equal to 1.353 molar. Okay, so yang ini macam mana cara nak buat dia? 5.7. So negative log. So you just press the calculator. Negative log 1.8 exponent negative 5. So 5.7 minus PKB. And then this one log, okay, so this one is uh, uh, shift log for uh, the value in the sebelah kiri ni. And then you times with 0 0.15, so you dapat 1.353. Jadi bila kita dah dapat 1.353, this one is molarity. And then we have um, we have to find the mol, mol for ammonium chloride. Daripada mol baru boleh cari mass. Jadi number of mol, macam mana kita dapat daripada mol, daripada volume. So, N, okay, NH4Cl equal to molarity times volume divided by 1000. So, molarity is 1.353, volume is 30 ml divided by 1000. So, kita dapat 0 0.0406 mol. Okay, so from mol, we boleh cari mass. Mass of NH4Cl equal to 0 0.0406 times okay, 14 plus 4 plus 35.5 chlorine. Okay, so, kita dapat 2.2 grams. Okay, so this is the mass of ammonium chloride to dissolve in 0 0.15 molar ammonia. Okay, untuk buffer solution. Okay, next. Kita pergi kepada next slide. Okay, calculate the pH of the solution form when A. 150 ml of 0.2 molar nitric acid is mixed with 75 ml of 0.2 molar ammonia, uh, sorry, sodium hydroxide. Jadi, this one adalah reaction between acid and base. Okay, acid and base. Titration of acid and base. Jadi kalau untuk titration acid and base, 
Okay, kita akan uh, write the equation. So, ammonia, uh, nitric acid is a strong acid. Okay, and then uh, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So, the equation A for A. 150 ml 0.2 molar HNO3 okay, plus 75 ml 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide Jadi equation dia adalah HNO3 plus sodium hydroxide we will produce Jadi kita boleh kira bilangan mol initial Bilangan mol initial is 150 times 0.2 over 1000 So kita dapat 0.03 mol Ok for this one 75 times 0.2 divided by 1000 so we got 0.015 so this one is 0 initially dash so bilangan mol change yang paling sedikit di sini adalah NaOH so dia akan minus 0.015 minus 0.015 plus 0.015 so at equilibrium dia akan tinggal 0.015 mol this one 0 0.015 jadi bila at the end of equation untuk titration yang tinggal di sini adalah weak uh, strong acid jadi kita akan kira concentration of strong acid ok so concentration HNO3 yang tertinggal 0.015 mol over so the volume 150 plus 75 so kita dapat 225 over 1000 liter ok, so kita dapat 0.0667 molar jadi bolehlah kita kira pH pH is equal to negative log concentration H plus ok, equal to negative log 0.0667 jadi kita dapat 1.0 1.8 pH So now for question 10B So sodium sulfate is uh, Sodium sulfate is an A2 So this one is 2 The ratio dia dekat sini adalah 1 over 1 to 2 okay. So kita calculate number of mole mole, this one is initially 0 ok, for water kita dash so the change is so this one is uh, 0. minus 0.01125 jadi dekat sini kita times 2, so di sini kita kena times 2, so 2 times 0. 0.01125 ok, so this one is plus 0. 0. 1125 mol. Jadi kalau times 2 kita akan dapat 0.0225. So at equilibrium kita minus di sini ini jadi kosong 0.0225 mana 0.0225 equal to 0. So this one is 0.0125 mol. Jadi since there is no acid and base, okay, this one 0, acid kosong, base pun kosong. So the solution left in the neutral salt. Okay, yang tinggal di sini adalah neutral salt. Okay, neutral salt. Jadi pH of the solution is equal to 7. Okay, so that's for question number 10B. So for question number 11, sketch a titration curve and give suitable indicator for the following condition of titration. So kita buat a uh, titration curve okay. jadi pertama sekali kita tengok uh, for question A kita ada uh, 25 ml of HCl 
which is a strong acid suppose uh, macam bila kita nak sketch a titration curve first kita buat uh, axis okay for question A titration curve for HCl and sodium hydroxide uh, titration so y axis x axis and then zero okay we label with ph and then uh, label with volume of sodium hydroxide kenapa volume of sodium hydroxide because kita nak masukkan sodium hydroxide ke dalam HCl jadi volume yang kita letakkan di dalam x kita adalah volume of sodium hydroxide so the curve should be okay menaik dia daripada pH yang rendah ke pH yang tinggi because we start from uh, lower pH eh? because initially dekat dalam uh, conical flask is an A, uh, HCl right so since there are strong acid dengan strong base so the equivalent point should be 7 okay and then 25 ml jadi kalau dengan 0.1 it should be 25 ml di sini okay 25 ml dengan 25 ml so pH dia mesti equal to 7 iaitu equal to neutral kenapa neutral because dia adalah di antara strong acid dengan strong base which is dia akan berikan a neutral salt produce so indicator yang sesuai untuk uh, titration curve uh, 11A di antara strong acid dengan strong base kita boleh gunakan methyl red okay, tapi lebih sesuai kita gunakan uh, phenolphthalein ataupun methyl uh, methyl red dia punya range dia rendah sikit ah ha? iaitu less than 7 ataupun tinggi sikit daripada 7 kita boleh gunakan phenolphthalein so this is titration curve untuk strong acid dengan strong base so next kita tengok titration curve bagi B so untuk question B okay, kita ada weak base dengan strong acid jadi maksudnya di sini ada uh, curve okay, dia mesti bermula daripada pH yang tinggi because uh, ammonia weak base dia pada pH yang permulaan okay. jadi titration curve untuk ammonia dan HCl so uh, y axis x axis okay pH and volume of HCl because kita masukkan HCl okay kita masukkan HCl di sini alright and then the curve should start from okay pH yang tinggi di sini okay and then equivalent point dia mesti less than 7 okay less than 7 because dia adalah uh, Uh, di antara strong acid dengan weak base ha? jadi dia mesti kurang daripada 7 di sini so kita boleh labelkan sebagai 6 ha? the equivalent point dia and then uh, you start daripada tinggi lah ok maybe kita boleh start daripada 12 and untuk 25 ml 1.0 kalau dengan 0.25 dia adalah 4 kali ganda iaitu kita letak di sini 100 ml this one is from calculation ok kita boleh tengok ha? di antara 25 darab 1 25 over times 1 over 1000 jadi kita akan dapat bilangan mol yang sama jadi untuk bilangan mol yang sama di sini so this one mesti 0.25 times 100 divided by 1000 so that's why saya labelkan di sini 100 ml untuk HCl ok alright so pH of equivalent point is less than 7 kerana dia adalah acidic salt kenapa acidic salt because our salt is from uh, weak base dengan strong acid ok Alright. jadi indikator yang paling sesuai kita boleh gunakan metal rate eh, di mana pH range dia adalah di antara 4.4 to uh, 6.2 and then the last curve untuk question C titration curve for uh, acetic acid and sodium hydroxide so the pH mesti bermula daripada bawah eh. so bila kita nak sketch a curve mesti uh, y axis okay x axis and then start from zero ph at y axis and volume of sodium hydroxide added at the x axis in milliliter so the ph mesti mula daripada rendah kerana di dalam conical flask kita letakkan acetic acid okay yang bertambah adalah sodium hydroxide jadi dia sama dengan a di sini okay right tapi this one adalah this is weak acid and strong base so dekat mana equivalent points dah equivalent point mesti 
Yes, more than 7. Okay, jadi kita letak 8 lah di sini. 8. So, this one is 60 ml. Kenapa 60? Because 30 times 0 0.1 divided by 1000. Okay, kita dapatkan bilangan mol dia. So, samakan dengan yang ini. Jadi, kalau dengan 60 times 0 0.05 divided by 1000. So, di sini lah equivalent point dia. Okay, so the pH dia mesti, equivalent point dia mesti more than 7. Kenapa basic? Because kita added weak acid dengan strong base. Jadi, base lebih dominant. Strong base. That's why kita dapat uh, pH is more than 7. So, the indicator that uh, suitable for this titration, kita pakai phenolphthalein. Di mana pH range dia di antara 8.3 sehingga 10. Next question. Define solubility. Okay, 11A. So, solubility, it is solubility is solubility, definition for solubility is the amount of solute ataupun salt that dissolve in one liter of solvent to form a saturated solution. So, ini adalah definition for solubility. So, now we continue for question 12B. The, you are given the molar solubility of silver sulfate Ag2SO4 which is 1.5 exponential negative 2 mol per liter. And then, uh, the question asks you to calculate the solubility product Ksp for this salt. Jadi, kalau um, untuk Ag2SO4, jadi kita tulis dahulu dia punya uh, expression for sodium uh, silver sulfate. Di sini, this one is 2S, this one is S. Di Ksp is equal to Okay, concentration Ag plus square times concentration SO4 2 minus. Okay, so we substitute. This one is 2S square times S equal to 4S cube. Jadi S diberi adalah 1.5 exponential negative 2 molar. Jadi kita just substitute the value 4 times 1.5 exponential negative 2 cube. Jadi kita dapat final answer 1.4 exponential negative 5. Di KSP tak perlu unit. So that's for question 12B. It was found experimentally that the KSP for calcium sulfate is 2.4 exponential negative 4. Calculate the molar solubility of calcium sulfate. Jadi calcium sulfate diberi sekarang dibagi KSP and then dia suruh cari molar solubility. So calcium sulfate okay, Ca SO4 because Ca2 plus SO4 to minus. Jadi dia punya formula adalah Ca SO4 okay, produce Ca2 plus equals plus SO4 to minus equals. Jadi this one adalah S, this one is S. The KSP is equal to concentration Ca2 plus times concentration SO4 to minus. So we just substitute this one is S times S equal to S square. So S the uh, S kita kita nak cari S square, okay? And then dibagi KSP is 2.4 exponential negative 4. So S is equal to okay square root 2.4 exponential negative 4. Jadi kita dapat S is equal to 1.55 exponent negative 2 mol per liter. Okay, molar. Jadi kalau untuk solubility, molar solubility, kita kena tulis unit. Kalau KSP, tak perlu unit. So now we proceed to question number 14. Uh, predicting precipitation. So, we'll precipitate form if uh, 200 ml of 0 0.004 molar of barium chloride is added to 600 ml of 0 0.008 molar of potassium sulfate. Jadi, dia bagi KSP. Uh, yang kita mau compare di sini adalah KSP untuk barium sulfate which is 1.1 exponential negative 10. So, um, 
Kita kena kira uh, solubility untuk barium dan juga solubility for sulfate. Kemudian baru kita boleh kira Q dan compare Q compare dengan KSP. So, mula sekali kita kira bilangan mol barium. Okay. So, bilangan mol barium is equal to MV over 1000. Molarity times volume divided by 1000. So, kita ada 200 ml darab 0.004 over 1000. So, we got uh, for barium is 8 exponent negative 4 mol. And then the new concentration of barium, okay, barium 2 plus is the new concentration of Ba2 plus is equal to number of mol over V total. So, V total di sini adalah 200 plus 800. Uh, 600. So, kita dapat 800. Okay. Exponent negative 4 mol over 600 plus 200 over 1000 liter. Okay. So, 1 exponent negative 3 molar for barium 2 plus. Dan kita kira pula untuk SO4 to minus. Okay, bilangan mol dia is equal to MV over 1000. So, for bar sul sulfate ion, SO4 to minus, molarity is uh, 0 0.008 times 600 milliliter over 1000. So, this one kita dapat 4.8 exponent negative 3 molar, mol. Okay. And then, the new concentration for sulfate, okay, SO4 to minus is equal to bilangan mol bagi dengan V total. Jadi, V total kita adalah sama dengan tadi, eh, 0 0.8. Eh, 0 0.8 liter ataupun 800 milliliter iaitu 600 plus 200 ml. So, number of mol is 4.8 exponent negative 3 mol. So, this one kita dapat 6 exponent negative 3 mol lah. Untuk barium sulfate, okay, for barium sulfate is Ba SO4 So, for barium sulfate Ba to plus darab SO4 to minus. Jadi, kita pakai Q is equal to concentration barium to plus darab sulfate ion concentration jadi kita akan dapat 6 exponent negative 6 so ini adalah nilai Q so by comparing Q dengan KSP okay, KSP is okay, KSP for barium sulfate given is 1.1 exponential negative 11 so yang ini kita kira 6 exponential negative 6 jadi yang lebih besar adalah Q Q is greater than KSP So, uh, kalau kita kom, okay, uh, kita tengok konsep pigmen kita. So dia akan shift to the left. Dia dekat left dia akan dapat apa di sini? Sulfur. Bila Q is greater than KSP, okay, precipitate will form, okay, because they shift to the shift to the left, okay, precipitate will form. Right, so that's for question number 14. Next, question number 15. Calculate the solubility of silver chromate Ag2CRO4 okay, in pure water A and B di dalam potassium chromate. So, this one is a uh, common ion effect. Jadi, kalau untuk common ion effect, later kita akan compare the solubility. Okay, jadi kita kira dahulu di dalam pure water. Untuk pure water, is very simple. Kita just gunakan... Okay, Ag2CrO4 solid, okay, produce 2Ag plus plus CrO4 to minus. So, this one is 2S, this one is S. So, KSP is equal to concentration Ag plus square times Concentration CRO4 to minus. Jadi kita masukkan this one is 2s square times s is equal to 4s cube. 
So, dia bagi KSP. Okay, KSP sama dengan 9 exponent negative 12. Is equal to 4 S cube. So, S is equal to KSP 9 exponent negative 12 over 4 cube root. So, we got Okay, di dalam pure water, we got 1.3 exponential negative 4. Molar. So, ini adalah uh, molar uh, solubility di dalam pure water. Okay, next. Okay, kita kira di dalam 0.005 molar of potassium dichromate. So, kita buat stable lah. This one ICE. So, this one dash dash dash. So, this one is 0. So, untuk chromate, dia ada, initially, dia ada 0 0.004. 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.005. So, this one is 2x 0 0.005 plus x. Kita gunakan approximation lah. Since KSP is too small, Okay, exponential negative 12 is too small. Okay, thus 0 0.005 plus x is nearly 0 0.005. Jadi, kita akan write, uh, rewrite the KSP is equal to two exponential negative 5. Jadi, this one adalah solubility di dalam potassium dichromate 0.005. So, kalau di dalam pure water, okay, di dalam pure water yang sebelum tadi kita dah kira, kita dapat 1.3 exponential negative formula. So, kalau di dalam 0.005 K2CRO4, dia akan jadi 2.5. 1,2 exponent negative 5 molar which is ok, solubility is lower ok because the present of common ion iaitu CR of 4 to minus Alright, so that's all for question number 15. Okay class, thank you for watching.